Believe it or not, the biggest export out of Belize is lobster to a particular seafood chain. While we can't name them, I assure you recognize their sign. These actually aren't the lobsters I'm referring to though. Caribbean lobsters don't have claws. If that's what you're eating, you're probably eating something from around Maine. However, if you just bought the lobster tail, it's probably from Belize or somewhere around there. The second largest export from Belize is actually what you put on your lobster. It's a fiery habanero sauce called Marie Sharps. I managed to catch up with Miss Marie at her factory near the Stan Creek Valley in Belize. My name is Marie Sharp. We are at Marisha's Fine Foods Factory. This is an agro-processing plant. Everything that we produce on our farm, we turn into a product. We produce here pepper sauces, jams and jellies, fruit drinks, chips. So we do quite a bit using up everything the farm produces. We started in 1981. My husband inherited the farm. Whatever we could lay our hands on, we started planting. We grow everything that we turn into a product. One of my sisters said, why don't you plant some habanero peppers? I started playing around with sauces and I started developing pepper sauces, never imagining that I was going to market it. I just gave away to friends and family. I started doing this in 81. It wasn't until 86 that I made my first little shipment to the US and I blew that up in the newspapers. In 1986, Marie overcame one of the first big hurdles to succeeding in the food business in Belize convincing fellow Belizeans that her hot sauce was good enough for them. Marie Sharp's now in the U.S. because believe it or not, Belize was one of my most difficult markets because Belizeans believe if the product does not come from the U.S., it's not good. When I first started, really, the product was not Marie Sharp, it was Melinda because the name of the farm here is Melinda Estates. Unfortunately, finding a U.S. distributor led to much greater problems, worse than she could have imagined. Unfortunately, my first distributor in the U.S., he trademarked the name for himself, so he did me out of the name. He thought he had my recipe because he had asked me for it. He was supposed to patent it, you know, so that nobody can encroach on the, on the formula. And uh, I gave him a fake one. And he found a cheaper source of habanero peppers out of Costa Rica. He was not somebody very smart because he had made me um, try some of the Costa Rica pepper, and I told him that the pepper wasn't my choice. The habanero pepper, for some reason here in Belize, I don't know if it's our long daylight hours, if it's the heat, the sunlight hours that we get, but our habaneros are hotter. I can bite into an habanero pepper from, from Costa Rica, <laughs> and I can bite into one from Belize, but that, I've been serious problems. <laughs> it's not the same. He started making the peppers in Costa Rica and he ended up with the name Melinda. We, we started going to court, but um, it was going to be a very costly thing for me. So I was advised by my lawyer, said, you know, just change your name and come back again with a new name and go from there. I changed the name into Marie Sharps. Of course, that I lost quite a bit of money because where we were at that time when, we, when I lost the name Melinda, there was not a habanero pepper sauce, not even one on the market. I was the sole habanero pepper sauce out there. By the time I came back with Marie Sharps, there was hundreds of habanero pepper sauce, none like mine. It had like set me back like about five years in my marketing plan. So I had to start over from scratch. Have you heard that story about a little ant eating a big elephant? That was the way we had to go, you know, just going little, 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 little bit at a time. Until today we have a, we have a captured market. Today I'm very, very proud to say that we have 99% of the Belize market covered. We're just about everywhere and all Belizeans are so proud of the products. They take them out as gifts, you know. There's not a visitor that comes to Belize that don't hear something about Marie Sharps before they leave. This here is like a steak sauce. And this is much better than A1. <laughs> the process is, is similar to, to the, the brewery. All the product has to be piped from the cooking to the tanks, and from the tanks to the filler, and then from the filler out. So we are similar in that way. With me, I have my workers, I have my farmers, and those are very poor people. Sometimes I have to help them to with money so that they can go out and plant the pepper. 
it makes you feel so good that, you know, this farmer can come and say, you know, Miss Marie, if I wasn't growing pepper, I couldn't send my child to high school. Almost like 75% of our labor force is women. Before Marie Sharps came into being, there was nothing there for the women to do. They were just poor housewives. Now they're income earners. We had a little machine that can do that, but they still work faster than the machine. <laughs> They carry home some money to, to make a better living for themselves and their families. So I feel also very, very proud of that. I think every Belizean is proud of having a Belizean company. Traveling all over the world and seeing your product out there is like a sort of like a pride for them. You know, they feel, they can't believe it. Some of them, you know, they go into the, all parts of the world and then they come across Marie Sharp and they have to say, but how did this get here, you know? And you know, I'm a Belizean, you know, I know this lady, you know? And, and they're very proud of that because we are one of the few Belizean products that has really made it all over the world. So I left Miss Marie with a bit of a capsaicin buzz and more admiration for the pride that Belizeans take in their country and the products that they grow and export here. Although Marie Sharp's habanero sauce completely dominates the market in Belize, there's a big contrast with Belican's monopoly of the beer market. Marie Sharp's wasn't founded by a wealthy Belizean family with political connections who helped maintain an empire. She started her company from the ground up, had it ripped off by an unscrupulous individual, and then built it back up again from scratch. You have to admire someone whose determination seems as fierce as, well, a habanero pepper. On the next Beer Diaries World Tour, we'll be investigating the history of other Belizeans who also use peppers to spice up their food, the ancient Maya. <laughs> Sanyanaro, me di paya asan serai.